Union Missionary Baptist Church Women Walk Worthy presents Black History Month, Women in Health. Shirley Middlebrook, Licensed Clinical Social Worker, LCSW. Shirley Middlebrook was born outside of Memphis, Tennessee in the town of Covington, Tennessee. At the age of seven, she, along with her mother and sister, relocated to Lansing, Michigan. Shirley graduated from J.W. Sexton High School. Following high school, she attended Lansing Community College and Michigan State University. She earned bachelor's and master's degrees in social work. Shirley enjoyed a wonderful career as a clinical social worker. Her passion has always been to help children. Shirley was one of the first African-American school social workers in East Lansing schools. She served their early childhood through elementary age children throughout the school district. Later, Shirley was among the first staff of clinical social workers for the State of Michigan Employee Service Program and one of two African-American social workers for that office. Shirley provided counseling at the National Council on Alcoholism, again, was one of the first African-Americans in that role. As a private practitioner, Shirley worked with children, youth, and families. Shirley's notable achievements are her many roles as first African-American social worker in various agencies throughout Lansing and the state of Michigan. She held membership in the National Association of Social Workers. Her greatest passion is community social work, particularly with youth. Her commitment to helping at-risk children motivated her along with her husband to become foster parents. She also provided grief counseling at Elle's Place. At Union Missionary Baptist Church, Shirley worked with young children in Be A Star Reading Program, Junior Church, and Vacation Bible School. She volunteered with the Women's Ministry at Avid House.
Good morning and welcome to our virtual worship service here at Union Missionary Baptist Church. We're so thrilled to have you on this morning and we hope that you're prepared to hear a wonderful word from the Lord and to engage in our praise and worship. I know I'm excited. If you are viewing this through Facebook, make sure that you like, share, and you can even make comments in the comment section if the spirit moves. We also want to encourage you to start a watch party. Watch Party helps those that you know connect to the service this morning and to know what we're doing here at Union Missionary Baptist Church. If you are viewing this on YouTube, make sure you hit this thumbs up. We want to see some thumbs. And we also want you to share and subscribe as well as hit that bell for notifications. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. We want to be able to connect with you on all of the platforms we have available. And we just want you to know that you are welcome anytime. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of the service we have prepared for you. God bless and have a good day. Good morning. Welcome to Union Missionary Baptist Church. We are glad you are here to worship with us today. My name is Tony Wheeler and I will be bringing your devotions today. I will be reading from Psalms 27, 1 through 7. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in the temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his taber tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. Thank you for the reading of the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today thanking you for all that you are to us in our lives. Lord Jesus, we ask that you wrap your arms around this whole world, Lord Jesus. Take over this pandemic and please, Lord, heal the sick. We're asking you to stop by the hospitals, the nursing homes, and even in our own homes, Lord Jesus. We pray that you uh, stop by and help our administration. We ask you to be with the president and our, and the, uh, our first madam, President Kamala Harris, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to also do a special blessing over our pastor. Lord, we ask that you give him a word to give to the people this day and this time. Lord, I ask you for protection over the whole world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to the Union Missionary Baptist Church Virtual Worship. I am going to be your host today, I'm Tammy Mans and it is my honor to be here to serve you today. Before we go any further, I'd like to ask each of you to invite a friend or a loved one to worship with us today. It's easy to do. If they're on Facebook, 
you can just type your name into the comments section. You can also click share or start a watch party. Every time you click share or start a watch party, you open up the door for someone else to hear the good news. And speaking of good news, let's welcome the praise team as they take us higher in the Lord. Come on, praise team. Let's praise the Lord.
Thank you, praise team, for allowing the Lord to use you in a mighty way. Well, we have come to one of the parts of the service that I love. It's the welcome. Now, this is a time that has been set aside by our pastor to welcome our guest. If you are a first time visitor with us, what we'd like for you to do is to type FTV into the comments. Now, if we were in church, in the chapel, the praise team will be up singing, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy to love. And then Pastor Jones would stand up and he would say, Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. Well, since we're not in the church, we're in virtual worship. So go ahead and type FTV in the comments and watch the outpouring of love as the congregation just welcomes you to our service and we're just so glad to have you. And we also have a saying here that when you get tired of being our guest, please join. Now we've come to the part of our service where we can all participate. What time is it? It's offering time. Now, Ms. Rhonda Jones is going to come and share four ways to give. While you prepare to give, let the choir bless you. It's giving time. God's been so good to us. I want to take a moment to thank you for your generosity that goes towards fulfilling God's ministry. His word teaches us what to do. It says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that I may have meat in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. We now have four ways to give. You can text the word GIVE to 855-712-7506. You can still give online by going to umbclansing.org and clicking on Tithely. You can also give by dropping your tithe at the physical location of the church located at 500 South Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Lansing, Michigan, 48915, or you can mail it to the same address. So the giving options now include Tively, text, mail-in, or drop-off. Please take advantage of one of these platforms this morning and give with a cheerful heart. Amen.
choir. Didn't they bless you? They sure did bless me. What a way to set the atmosphere. And now it's time to be ready for the work. I know I'm ready. Are you? What you're going to need, of course, is your Bible, notepad, and a pen. Come on and let's encourage the pastor and type in the comments, preach the word, pastor. Good morning. I want to talk to us this morning from 1 John chapter 1 and verse 4. And these things we write to you that you may have, that your joy may be full. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you for the power of your word. We ask that the Holy Spirit would grant clear interpretation of your word that we might not only be inspired but that we would find hope in difficult times bless us now in the wonderful and precious name of jesus we pray amen i want to talk with us about joy. But before I get started talking about joy, perhaps I need to define it because I think some of us might think that I'm talking about being happy. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about. Joy is choosing to respond to external circumstances with an inner contentment and satisfaction that God will somehow use the experience or the experiences that we have to accomplish his will. It is that internal contentment that that defines for the most part the joy that we should feel in difficult times john as he writes really offers a kind of panacea for those surrounded by by pessimism and and doubt. He is very concerned about false teachers and he's concerned that while they are in trying times that they need an inner resource that can rejuvenate them, that can give them strength to, to manage the darkness, to manage the downside of life. And I would tend to think that for the most part, we need the same thing because, because we run into those storms. We run into the darkness we have experienced in our own time the ravages of a pandemic. We've, we're still reeling from almost 500,000 people who have lost life because of the coronavirus. We are dealing with racial tensions like our people dealt with centuries ago. Those forces are, are still here. The anger, the hatred is still here. And, and something that we are 
dealing with since we've had a president that has heightened the feelings through his own racist agenda, we are encountering this kind of darkness and, and these kinds of difficulties today. But, but John, I think, offers us some deeper thought about how even in the midst of these very trying and difficult times, we can experience joy, we can have joy. And in many ways, I, I think that his, his message should resonate with us uh, because of what it is that we're going through. The pandemic, the sagging economy, and again, the uptick in racism. And, and perhaps as, as you have dealt with much of this, you, you've asked yourself, well, where, where in the world can I find joy? Well, what, what John uh, felt was that you could find joy when you have experienced the word of life. And you see that really in the first verse. You can find joy when you have experienced the word of life. He says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life that which was from the beginning he says which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon uh, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life and these are some interesting distinctions in terms of, of, of his experience. He talks about what he has heard. How many of you have, have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ over and over again? And no matter how many times you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, I mean, it, it is always refreshing. It, it is always something deeply spiritual about it. And I'm sure that, that you have felt that when you have come to, to worship God, and even if it's the same old story, somehow it creates an inner joy within your soul to be in fellowship and kindred mind with the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit and to have that seeming partnership with God. What we, what we have heard, how we have taken the word of God into ourselves by hearing. And he says, what we have also seen I would tend to think that all of us have had wonderful experiences and, and we've seen some uplifting things, how God has healed, how he has saved, how he has made a way, how he's turned midnight into day, how he has lifted us out of, of sorrow. I'm sure you have. But if you've walked with him, I'm sure that you come away with a testimony that the Lord will make a way somehow. And you don't always know how, but, but you can trust him and you know that he will. And the poet says, yes, he will. Not only what we have heard and what we have seen, but what we have also touched and it is 
John's testimony that not only was he with the Lord, but he was able to touch him. While we might not be able to touch him in a very physical sense, we can touch him with our love and with our affection. We can touch him with our prayers. We can touch him with the sensitivity of his spirit that dwells in him. We can touch him with our sentiment, with our sincerity. We, we can touch him. And when we touch him, what takes place to a great extent is that he touches us. You remember the song, he touched me and now I know. Yeah, I know. He touched me and he made me whole. We, we get joy out of the word of life. And I'm not sure about you, but there's something about preaching that, that gives me joy. You know, when I hear the word of God, when I hear the gospel preached and preached with conviction, that's very how he died and was buried and tells me about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, tells me about his ascension. Yes, there is joy within my soul. I experience it. It doesn't matter what I might have been going through. For some reason, even in the midst of that, I still have joy. We're going to have joy not only when we have had experiences with the word of life, but when we embrace eternal life. Notice verse two, the life was manifest and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifest to us. My brothers and my sisters, we, we should really embrace eternal life when we embrace eternal life, what, what it does is really take the sting out of death. You remember, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? You know, thanks be to God, we have the victory even over the grave. And I know that one, you know, might not feel a sense of joy when we talk about death. But my brothers and my sisters, when we understand that we even have victory in Christ Jesus over death, that should bring us joy. John witnessed the manifestation of this truth. He saw and fellowshiped with a resurrected savior. And he was, he was sure and very sure, willing to lay down his, his own life for the cause because he knew that when this life was over, that it wasn't really over. It was really just beginning and going into eternity. So no matter what it is that, that we might be facing, and, and at some point we, we will be facing death, but, but the joy of knowing that we have eternal life should give us comfort. John was a witness to the resurrected Savior, and he knew he understood this truth. And I know that when we think about eternal life, we are accused of preaching an, an afterlife message, but, but it's a good thing to know that, that when this life has concluded, that we have another building of God not made with hands, one that is eternal in the heavens. 
We remember what Jesus said to his disciples. He simply said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, Jesus said, I would have, I would have told you. Not only that, but he said, I'm going, but if I go, I am coming again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. It's a wonderful thing, and it should create some joy in your heart, knowing that when your labor is done, you would just simply fly away to be at rest. Well, there should be joy. Joy in knowing that we have entered into a unique fellowship with the Father and the Son. That, that we have that level of intimacy. Notice verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. What's interesting about that is that when we are in Christ, when, when we are in fact born again, when we have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, not only do we have fellowship with, with those who are in the household of faith, but it's also an historic fellowship. In other words, we have, we have fellowship with all of those who have come before, who, who share this belief and who share this hope. We, we are in fellowship with them as well. And they are in fellowship with us. And, and, and truly our fellowship is, is with the Father and with the Son and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And this is a, a wonderful proclamation of, of, of intimacy that, that should in fact give us a sense of joy when we are in fellowship with, with the Father, when we are in fellowship with the Son, when we have that kind of relationship spiritually. And we may be going through some tough times and, and, and we are, but we should also realize and I think recognize that when we have a relationship with the Father and when we have a relationship with the Son, that we can still have joy. I'm not sure about you, but I find joy in my fellowship with you. I get joy out of just sharing, especially when we worship together and I see the joy on your face when the word of God is preached, when the songs of Zion are sung. I see it. I see the joy in your soul. And to have that relationship and fellowship with the Father and with the Son, I would suggest that it's it's total joy. I mean, you know, some people get joy out of going to amusement parks and going to movies. And I suppose you can get a level of joy and contentment there, but there is no greater joy than to worship God in spirit and in truth and feel the infusion of his presence and his spirit with you. There's no greater joy than that. God has given us access to his glory through fellowship. The fellowship that we find in prayer, the fellowship that we can have uh, even closer when we fast, when we worship. Fellowship is, is really about relationship. It's about sometimes in that fellowship, 
our cup runs over with goodness and also with mercy. John said, you know, these things we write to you that your joy may be full. And when we experience the word of life, and let me conclude, when we embrace the eternality of life, when we enjoy the fellowship of the Father and Son, your joy will certainly be full. Can I just say it because I feel it, oh, what a fellowship, oh, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms, can I say it, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Can I say I get joy when I think about what he's done for me? And sometimes we get so bogged down with life that we forget that there is something greater, something more wonderful than we could ever imagine waiting for us in the future. My brother and my sister, I don't know what it is you're going through. I don't know what it is you feel. But I want to suggest to you that you can have joy. Joy in your relationship with the Father and with the Son. You can have joy in just the fellowship of his word. You can have joy as you find contentment in the fact that he can even use the difficulty of your life to bring about his will knowing that all things work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. Be patient with God. He's not forgotten about you. And experience that, that inner joy. It is a spiritual intimacy with him. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, how grateful we are that you were able to give us joy in the midst of the most difficult circumstances, and we are grateful. We thank you for your word that empowers us, and we ask as we pray that if there is someone who has not experienced this joy, someone that might not know you and the pardon of their sins, that you would grant them the opportunity to confess with their mouth that you are Lord and believe in their heart that, you, that you've been raised from the dead. For your word says they will be saved. We pray that you will draw someone unto you with the simple expression of them saying, yes, I believe and I want to be saved. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you and may God keep you. I trust that you will have a great Sunday and that um, you will get through this day with the kind of joy that I hope you can have.
Good morning. I, I do want to bring us up to date, generally speaking, with some of the things which are going on in the ministry. You could really get caught up if you would go to our webpage for for details. But I do want to invite you to participate and especially to have your children participate with Sunday School. It, it's extremely important. Um, it's exciting. As a matter of fact, we have some great teachers and I think you would greatly benefit from tuning in or logging in, I suppose, uh, for, for Sunday School. Keep that in mind. We will be having a church meeting that uh, that's an important meeting and you uh, can get more information uh, on our website but it's february the 27th 2021 and you must register to attend because we will be taking a vote i hope that uh, our kids have turned in their easter speeches it's always a joy to see them and to hear them and we're going to feature them so parents please make sure that that happens my heart has really been broken when i've uh, looked at what's going on in texas and i know we have related family members some of us uh, there uh, in the state of texas and wow it's it's really difficult and i thought that if there were some of you who might want to make a donation or uh, a contribution to uh, to help the relief efforts there that you that if you wanted to do that i think we can we can help you can uh, choose to indicate a donation that you send into the church and and i would certainly make sure that that we get those donations to the proper place so that people can find some help and some aid it's a very painful situation to watch all right god bless you and, and god keep you and i hope that uh, this sunday will have been inspiring for you Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful word. And I also would like to thank you, congregation, for allowing me to serve as your host this morning. It truly was a, a joyous experience, and I just really thank you all for it. Now, I have a couple of reminders for you. Union's Women's Ministry, Women Walk Worthy, is featuring women in the Bible, the arts, and more for Black History Month. You can check us out on all of the social media platforms. And then on next Sunday, the youth is going to be presenting Sound the Alarm, a Black History presentation. And I tell you, that's going to be a presentation from our youth that you don't want to miss. Okay, everyone, um, stay warm, stay blessed, continue to love on each other, wear your mask, please use your hand sanitizer, and just show everyone love. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week. God bless you.